I've been running an educational game maker and coding YouTube channel for a couple years now, and even though I've only been using GPT-4 for a couple weeks, I'm incredibly impressed by it. And I began to wonder whether or not I'm out of a job. Can you make a game now without learning how to code? So I decided to use GPT-4 to make a game in Game Maker. After some brainstorming with GPT-4, I decided to make a very simple fishing game. We got off to a bit of a rocky start, I mean that's just rude, but after asking it to use Game Maker, it gave me a pretty decent outline. There were definitely problems with the outline, this is not how you do screen size in Game Maker, but it did help me brainstorm a name and wish me luck, so that was nice, and things went smoothly for a while. I followed the first few steps and got some art in, but it was definitely making choices that I personally wouldn't make. For example, it had me create an empty object, just so that I could attach a sprite to it instead of putting the sprite on an asset layer in the room. It actually wanted me to do more of this, but I decided to use my own judgment and use tiles instead. But overall, it was getting the code correct, and it was telling me what steps I needed to take. It knew how to make objects and sprites in Game Maker, and even what events to use, and with very few exceptions, what functions were real functions in Game Maker. It did hallucinate this one right here, but after being told that that wasn't a real function in Game Maker, it corrected itself. And here we actually had a very interesting exchange. After correcting itself to the right function, it still put the wrong number of arguments in. Now I know what I'm supposed to do here, and in fact I have Feather telling me what I'm supposed to do here, but instead of just fixing it, I decided to try something. I opened up the manual page for this function, I copy and pasted that page into ChatGPT, and I asked it to read the page and then correct itself, which it did, giving me the correct code. I've been experimenting with GPT-4 and GameMaker for a couple weeks now, and this is actually a really reliable way to get it to give you correct information. Its general knowledge of GameMaker is often either wrong or just out of date. It still really likes to suggest using maps and lists, but you can tell it what you want and give it information that is more up to date by copying and pasting information, for example, into the chat, and then it will be correct going forward, at least in that conversation. After this, things started going pretty smoothly again. It was giving me code that worked, I was asking for modifications to the code, and it was modifying it to add a new feature or do something different based on my request. And at one point, I even asked it to break down one of its stranger lines of code and explain it to me step by step. I still wouldn't write this code this way, this is far too complicated for what needs to happen here, but I did actually learn something from GPT-4's explanation, which is pretty cool. And asking GPT-4 to explain code like this is a really useful thing to do. It's actually very good at explaining lines of code or even chunks of code to you, which can be helpful when reading code written by someone else. Although things went smoothly for a bit, we eventually hit a very big snag. The fish were set to change direction at the edge of the screen with this code, but they were set to spawn outside of the screen. This caused a problem and GPT-4 just couldn't solve it, or at least I was not capable of getting it to. Perhaps if I had hit my head against the wall for a little bit longer, I would have succeeded, but eventually I gave up and told it how to solve the problem. I still didn't give it the code it needed to write, but I told it to use a state machine and have two different states, one for when the fish spawns in and one for the fish once it makes it on screen. Then I asked it to write the code and this time it got it correct. Not too long after that, I did get my first crash and amusingly ChatGPT tried to correct it when it was actually my mistake. I hadn't noticed all of the code that it gave me and forgot to copy in the code that initialized the new variable. I figured out my mistake pretty quickly, but it was an interesting problem to run into. Because the error was on my end, ChatGPT didn't actually know how to solve it, because it assumed I had followed its instructions. So I was suggesting random non-solutions, and I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't recognized my mistake. So even GPT-4 isn't immune from human error. By this point, the game was actually getting close to finished. We had another small snag as I added in some of the audio because I wanted there to be a sound whenever the hook crossed the waterline. This isn't complicated, but GPT-4 was struggling with modifying its earlier code, and its modifications tended to break things. At this point, I was curious to see how easy it would be to modify code written by ChatGPT, so I decided to fix the problem myself. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it turned out to be no harder or easier than fixing any code I wasn't familiar with, which was nice. The final problem I had was due to GPT-4 just being out of date. GameMaker added a bunch of filters and effects in the last few years and GPT-4 doesn't know anything about them. When asked, it suggested creating a shader. 
I was tempted to see if it could write a shader, but instead I opened everybody's favorite web browser, Microsoft Edge, and used Bing, which also uses GPT-4, but has the advantage of being able to access the internet and read web pages. I opened the Game Maker manual up and asked Bing to analyze it and give me step-by-step -step instructions for how to add filters and effects, which it correctly did. There were still a few graphical glitches, but I decided I had done everything that I had set out to do and called it. I thanked GPT-4 for its help and asked it if it had anything to say to you, and it wrote you all a very nice and encouraging message. So can GPT-4 make a game for you? No, I don't think so. At least not yet. But it is kind of mind-blowing that this is possible. Even a year ago, it would have been inconceivable to think of working with an AI like this to create a video game. But despite how truly impressive it is, and it is very impressive, from the standpoint of, can it make a game for you? The answer is still very much no. There were so many things that GPT-4 just didn't know how to do or didn't get right, and it would have been an incredibly frustrating experience if I didn't know how to solve the problems it was creating. In fact, I think relying solely on it to make your game for you could actually make it harder, as it will likely get you just far enough to where you have no idea how to continue, like a boat that gets you out into the middle of the ocean before you find out it's full of holes. It's also worth pointing out that it took me longer to make this game with GPT-4 than it would have on my own, and neither the code or the design is that good. It's often more complicated than it needs to be, and it would be difficult to extend and modify down the road. And at the same time, GPT-4 starts to struggle as more information gets added, and it has difficulty following the logic across multiple systems without a lot of help from you. I just can't imagine using GPT-4 to design a game of any real size. So GPT-4 can't make your dream game for you. And I'm not out of a job, at least not yet. But I do think that GPT-4 is incredible and I actually use it almost every day. And I think that there are some amazing ways to use it with GameMaker, both to create games and learn how to code. I'm working on that video right now and it should be up in the next couple weeks.